Uh, High Country Clay is a community clay studio and our mission is to connect community through clay and get people excited about clay. Um, if you have clay experience, this could be a place for you to come and work. And basically we offer anything from day passes where you can come in during the day and you're supplied with clay and full access to the studio and you can take your, your pieces all the way through the firing process if you want and glaze. Kind of, kind of back in again and I'm just gonna give it a little You're gonna to do another pool. And, and we also offer full membership services which entail 24-7 uh, access to the studio, your own space for tools and glazes and you get uh, member discounts on clay, workshops, and opportunities to sell. So I started at HCC a little over a year ago. Um, I've loved it here. It's an amazing community space. It's open for basically everybody, and everybody here has such a unique like, perspective on art and just an amazing community we have here, and I love it. It's a perfect place. I love to paint, and then I found clay, and I found a way to combine them, and so I'm here all the time, and I help run it, and I just love being here, um, being a part of the workshops, and um, letting members get a chance to find what they love to do best and help teach others. Something that we're, we're really passionate about are people that are interested in clay and have never touched clay. So we actually have a lot of beginners in our studio. Um, they've, they've had this desire to experiment with clay and we'll say like come in and do a day pass and see if you like it. If you really like it, if you, you're going to want to come back, then maybe look at getting a membership. Um, and it's been really cool to see people that have no experience that have stuck with it or now, you know, have the clay bug and are obsessed with it and are making really cool work. We also have people who have 20 years experience here that have their own studios that come in just to, to this is like kind of a touchstone for the the community and, and the arts and they come in here just to be around other artists um, because it's a, a clay studio but we also have a tattoo studio in here and we have people from all different mediums that, that kind of hang out here but if, if you're really into something else like painting or drawing and you want to kind of expand and explore another medium clay is awesome because you can immediately bring your other craft into it. For many years the Boone community has been trying to open a skate park through crowdfunding. Well this past Saturday the Boone Skate Park finally opened up to the public for the first time ever. Over the last week, I got to meet with some people in the community and learn what it was like before having a skate park. Upon visiting the skate park, which is located at 201 Casey Lane off the Greenway Trail and next to the water treatment facility, I was welcomed by a large crowd already enjoying the park. One visitor gave me some insight on what it's finally like to have a place to skate at. We've been waiting a while. Uh, we've just been at the recess ramp until now. So, I mean, it's not amazing or anything, but it's definitely better than what we had before, which was nothing. So, I mean. Before the skate park was open to the public, this little half pipe right outside of recess skate and snow was one of the only places that skaters could come to in Boone. The nearest skate park besides this was about an hour away. Speaking of recess skate and snow, the owners have played a very large part in contributing to the success of having the park finally here. It has been a long time coming, three years in the process actually, and after multiple delays, the park is finally ready for public use after construction began this September and finished early November. There may not be much yet, but like Dixon said, it is more than there was before, and visitors can look forward to many expansions, additions, and events in the future. In terms of how the park came to be, it was primarily funded by the public and grants, but one big contributing factor was the local stores such as Anna Bananas placing donation jars by their cash registers. Really great opportunity to raise a lot of money here actually um, from both our staff and our customers and it's been an extremely bonding experience um, for all of us together um, and we just love to see kids being active and it's a really great success story for our community I think just being able to raise this much money and come together and get this together. Although seemingly very basic now, plans have already been put into play to expand the skate park even more in the future. For more updates you can follow along your Instagram at Boone Greenway Skate Park. For the Appalachian Weekly News, I'm Zach White. The Wildwood Community Market is a new grocery store that specializes in selling all-natural products. 
I got the chance to meet the owner and take a look behind the scenes before they open to the public. Located at 182 Howard Street, the Wildwood Community Market will strive to supply the community with locally grown and supplied foods. I met Joe Mager, the owner of Wildwood, who told me a little bit about what their goal is with the store. Uh, we are intending to be a natural foods market in downtown Boone, specializing in local goods, including produce and meats and coffee and honey and bread and cheese and all the things that people are doing up here in Boone that there's not kind of a good single convenient outlet for. In terms of quality and variety, Joe is ready to be precise. Hormone-free, antibiotic-free meats. We don't want produce that's heavily sprayed. Uh, we also still want to be able to sell avocados and citrus fruit. Obviously, nobody in the high country is growing those, so um, there will be, it won't be exclusively local products, but we want to feature and uh, promote as many local businesses as we can. Although unfinished, Joe gave me a tour of the rest of the market and told me about some future plans, such as putting to use this walk-up style window. So this will be all uh, produce here and then dairy. There's local milk, there's local butter, there's local ice cream, uh, all that kind of stuff is going here, plus some non-dairy versions of that. We'll have some frozen goods here. And then the deli case, we'll have eight feet of this thing. It's gonna be like your coleslaws and kale salads and grilled chicken breast and salmon and like all the whole good foods that will be prepared right here on site. And then we're also reserving four feet of the case for fresh local meat. So the store might shut at nine, but then maybe at 10, 11 o'clock comes around and the, the bar crowd starts cranking. And we open the window up and we'll serve sandwiches, tacos, uh, late night kind of healthy versions of bar food. In terms of when the market is scheduled to open, hopes are still held high for the end of this year, but due to constraints, it will likely be the beginning of next year. For more updates, you can follow along their Instagram at Wildwood Community Market. For the Appalachian Weekly News, I'm Zach White. Coming to campus. Well, today construction begins and Zanaira Marine Lopez is live at the site of the groundbreaking ceremony. Zanaira, what can you tell us? Thank you, Stephen and Sydney. I'm here at the site of the former Boy Hill Inn and all the way at the end of Bodenheimer Drive where they're breaking ground today at 1 p.m. for a ceremony. We were able to get here just a little bit earlier to show you what the Innovation District's all about and to see them getting set up for the ceremony. The Innovation District will consist of a conservatory for biodiversity education and research. Here in Southern Appalachia, there's a lot of diverse plant and animal life and in the Blue Ridge Mountains. This is just one of many several pro major projects planned for the Innovation District and it will serve as an important link between App State's campus and the surrounding communities through education, research, and outreach. This will be in addition to the College of Arts and Sciences, especially those biology students, and a lot of App State students are sure to benefit from this new Innovation District coming. Thank you, Stephen and Sydney. Back to you. Thank residents have experienced one of the greatest effects of COVID has been a struggle with employment. Our correspondent Dylan Henson is going to tell us about how businesses are coming back in Boone. Thanks Grace and Ivy. Here on King Street, as you can tell, that many of the businesses have been without employees for a while. But just in the past couple of weeks, a lot of these businesses have seen an influx of applicants. This week, I took a look at the labor situation here in Boone. With many career opportunities at their disposal, Boone is getting back to work. For job resources, you could visit the Boone Area Chamber of Commerce's website at www.boonechamber.com. And reporting for the Appalachian Weekly News, I'm Dylan Henson. Thanks so much, Dylan. That's our Publix for Starbucks anyway, you probably weren't going at all. Like Austin said, this does have the potential to create even more traffic than there already is on King Street, even right now. With this Starbucks location, there could potentially be included a drive through and a patio, which could make this even worse, and especially worse for these locally owned coffee shops that have been here for much longer. That process. Well, our very own Mia Mendez is at the Career Center at the Convocation Center on the scene. 
It's career fair season here in Boone as December commencement approaches. Throughout the past few weeks, the Career Development Center's fly fishing season is about to pick up here in the high country, and I'm excited to head out to the river early on Monday morning, especially after this trout restock. Steven, what more can you tell us about this? So I'm standing here in front of the Watauga River, which is a hot spot for fly fishing. An infamous 50-year-old homicide in the area has finally been solved. Our correspondent, Shannon Pendleton, has more. Shannon, what can you tell us? Yes, Grayson Ivy. So if you look to the right of us behind me, that yellow house, 50 years ago, a triple homicide happened there. It's called the Durham case to the locals because it's named after the family. It's hard to say what exactly will happen to Mr. Davis in regards to this crime, but he is currently on death row for other crimes he has committed. For the Appalachian Weekly News, I'm Shannon Pendleton. Back to you, Grace and Ivy. Thanks so much, Shannon. With the Boone housing crisis, Dylan, what more can you tell us? Thanks, and Iron Shannon. It is no secret that Boone suffers from a housing shortage and even affordable housing. This week, I took a look at the housing crisis that is plaguing the high country. about these events, you can visit www.watagahousingforum.org. And remember to sign up for these events because these, these things fill up really quickly. And reporting for the Appalachian Weekly News, I'm Dylan Henson. Back to you guys in the studio. Fortunately, case counts are very low this week, with four active cases among students and no active cases among employees. However, there's been mixed feelings about the mask mandate being lifted at the university. Sophomore Colin Tilly created a petition encouraging the UNC system not to remove the mask mandate. His petition has received over 650 signatures so far. We went to campus to find out more about what students think of the mask mandate being lifted. Yeah, I think it's about time. I'm, I was kind of sick of wearing masks, and I think a lot of people were, but I don't know, if you, if you still feel the need to wear one, that's totally fine, but I'm kind of glad it's not forced anymore. Um, I think it was good that we were given an option and that if you still want to and you don't feel comfortable, you have the, you have the power to make your own decision. I think it's a good thing, especially with, um, I think everybody who's needed to get a vaccine has gotten one or if they've decided they're not going to get one, they're not going to. So it's nice being able to see everybody's faces and actually hear your professors talk. So. I think, I think it's good that it got lifted, but I can see where people would still be um, a little hesitant about it. I know they've still got it on the buses, which is kind of weird because you carry around a mask for just the bus. But I think that the mask mandate is kind of a, a iffy situation on campus, uh, especially when I live in the dorm. Um, but I think it's good for people's morale, and I think that everybody's pretty happy about having it lifted. The App State Student Government Association, the Staff Senate, and the Faculty Senate of Appalachian State University will hold a town hall meeting. The meeting is scheduled to take place at 6.30 p.m. on Sunday, February 20th in the Belk Library Auditorium. The meeting will focus on the topic of where App State is headed by addressing the university's mission, diversity and inclusion, the university's financial resources, town-gown relations, and sustainability and climate change. This is the first meeting in App State's history that is specifically designed to listen to the voices of the various groups that represent App State and the town of Boone that are neither elected nor selected leaders of either the university or the town. I think we definitely need more buildings. Uh, ooh, more public transportation. Uh, despite the apple cart being free, I'm pretty sure. Um, <laughs> hmm. Free textbooks. Definitely more diversity. Um, I feel like a lot of people are really enclosed in their own bubble um, still. Like we are part of Intap, so we try to create like a bigger and better environment for like a lot of international acceptance and diversity. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that would be something to work on. Um, and in regards with um, the environment, I don't think. Appalachian looks like it's very sustainable, but it doesn't really is. You know, it's like a it's like a picture that they portray. Mm -hmm. um, so we have one windmill that powers half of App Heights and the Chancellor's house, and that's it. And we promo that a lot. So. <laughs>